In this tutorial, we are going to take you through the process of creating the vectors and toolpaths required to build this nameplate which you can see on screen, which is for an imaginary piece of home-built hi-fi equipment. During this process, we will demonstrate the use of the snapping features in the drawing tools to help build geometry. We will use the text tools in the software to access system fonts for our nameplate title and we will use the node editing tools to manually change the shape of vectors we have created. So let's start by opening a fresh copy of the software and click the icon to create a new file. And for our new job setup we're going to specify a width of 8.5 inches, a height of 2.5 inches and the material thickness we're going to specify as an eighth of an inch so 0 0.125. We're going to have the XY date and position in the center and our unit so it's going to remain in inches and when we're happy with that just press OK. The first thing we are going to want to do is going to create our outline for our nameplate. To do this we're going to use the draw rectangle tool under create vectors and we're going to specify the width to be 7.75 inches wide and the height to be 1.75 inches high. And on our rectangle we want to have a radius corner so we can do this by selecting this option here to radius the external corner and I'm going to choose a radius of 0 0.1 inches and then I'm going to hit create. Now this will create our outline for our nameplate so we can click close. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to create the drill holes for our nameplate. I'm going to do this by going to the draw circle tool. I'm going to specify a diameter of our circle to be 1 16th of an inch if I don't know what the decimal value is of that, we can do 1 divided by 16 and then press the equals on your keyboard and it will give us the decimal value. And what we can do now is we can use the mouse pointer and we can snap to the center of our arc of our rectangle. We should find that our crosshair will change to this symbol with the crosshair and a circle inside it. What we need to do then is just click our left mouse button and that will then create our circle. And we can do this for each one of our corners of our nameplate, like so. And when we finish drawing our circles, we can just click close to close that tool. What we're going to do now is we're going to create the internal rectangle for our border of our nameplate. So again, if we go to the draw rectangle tool, and this time I want to have an internal radius corner like the one demonstrated here and rather than specify the dimensions of the rectangle that I want again we can use the snapping tool so if we just drag our mouse over to our work area and if we just hover over the center of our circle we'll see we'll get that crosshair again and what we can do now is we can hold down the left mouse button and then drag to the opposite side to the bottom right drill hole that we created earlier and then look for that same symbol and then when we believe we're in the right space we can just let go of the left mouse button and that will create our internal rectangle like so and it will also in include the radius internal edge that we asked for as well and what we can do now is we can close this form the next thing we're going to want to do is to add some text to our nameplate so to do this we can use the draw text tool under create vectors and I'm going to just specify my text as vector phone, that's V-E-C-T-O-P-H-O-N-E -E. I'm going to select a true type font and just select the drop down once you've selected the drop down you can start to type the font that you want so I want the brush script so I would start to type B-R-U-S-H and as you can see it has highlighted the font that I'm after so I can just click enter. If you don't have brush script on your system you can select any other script type font. I'm going to select to align our text to the center and I'm going to specify a text height of one inch and when I've done that I'm going to click apply and then close. As you can see the text hasn't quite come into the middle of our part so we can align this by going to transform objects 
and then selecting the icon to align selected objects. And then if we go to this icon here, this will center the text to our part. When we're happy with that, we can then press close. With text in our job, the software allows us to transform our text in many ways. If we're not happy with the space in between characters in our text, we can simply use the tool to edit text spacing and curve, which is this option here. This will allow us to edit the spacing in between the characters of our text. Clicking the left mouse button in between characters will bring the characters close together. If we hold down shift and then press the left mouse button, this will increase the space in between our characters. We can do this for all the characters where we think it needs to be done to either bring them together or make them further apart. Another thing we can do to our text is we can add a curve to our text by using these control points here. We can come over them with our mouse and then hold down the left mouse button and then just drag upwards for an upward curve. Or if we want to create a downwards curve, we go down to the bottom control point and do the same. For this demonstration though, we don't want to have any curve to our text. To exit the spacing and curve tool, we can simply just come down to edit objects and then select this mouse button here. When using this type of font, we would like the machine to carve out the text as if it was one continuous word. At the moment, this would not happen because the letters do not form one continuous line. So to accomplish this, we will need to transform the text object to standard vectors and then weld them together to form one continuous vector. At the moment, we can still edit the text using the text tool options. But once we have converted the text to normal vectors, we will no longer be able to do this. So as long as we're happy with the spacing that we've got at the moment, we can go ahead and convert our text to vectors. So to do this, we need to highlight our text and then right click and then select the option to convert to curves. And this will now convert each individual character to its own vector. And what we want to do now is we want to weld all the characters that are joined together into one continuous vector. Now to do this, we just need to highlight the characters which we want to create the one continuous vector with. We need to make sure that we don't include any inner vectors because they will get deleted. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we deselect all the inner vectors on the letters like E, O, P, O and E. So to do that we can hold shift on the keyboard and then select the vectors with our left mouse button to deselect. And when we've done that we can go over to the edit objects and then select to weld the vectors. And this will now create the continuous vector that we were after. We need to keep in mind that when converting script type text to standard vectors and then welding them into one continuous vector, that where the individual characters meet, there could be some inconsistencies in the vectors. So if we zoom in to say in between the O and the P, and we can see that where the tails of the O and then joined with the P, it seems to have included the jagged edge of where the two tails would have overlapped. So to rectify this situation, what we can do is we can go to Edit Objects and then select the Node Editing Mode. And then you'll know that we're in Node Editing Mode because they will have this cursor. And what we need to do with the cursor is just come over the vectors and just click once and this will show you all the construction points to our vectors. And what we can do is we can edit these or we can delete them. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a node and then I'm going to right click and then press delete. And what that will do is that will delete the node and it will then join the next node in line to the last node in place. So I can then check to see if that looks any better. If I think that's still not good enough, I can delete that one as well and see if that looks any better, which I think it does. So then I'm going to move on to the other letters and look for more inconsistencies. So again, just hit delete on the keyboard. And go around and do this for all the characters where you believe there could be some inconsistencies. But I believe that may actually be it for this 
particular one. Yeah, everything else looks fine. So let's exit node editing mode by we can either press escape on the keyboard or we can come over to the edit objects and select the selection mode arrow. And once we've done that we can press F on the keyboard to zoom to fit. One thing I may want to do here is I may want to edit the V so I may want to make that a little taller and I may also want to bring it a little closer to the rest of the text. So to do that we can simply select it once and then select it again to take it into transform mode. And we can just use the drag arrows to just increase that height there. And then we can use the mouse keys to then jog it around the screen. And when you think you've found your sweet spot, simply click into the white space to deselect. The last thing we're going to do with this text is simply highlight this text and then we're going to resize it. So simply select it like that and then come over to the set selected object size. And what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck the link XY and we're going to specify the width to be 7 inches and we're going to give it a height of 1.25 inches. And when we've done that, simply click apply and then close and then again simply deselect by clicking in the white space. Next we're going to add our serial number. So to do that again we've got to use the text tool. So come to the draw text icon and select that and then type in the text box serial all in capitals NO 00001 and this time we want to use a single line text so select that option and then click on the drop down and we want to select the avant-garde 1L text which is just here so select that make sure the text alignment is in the center and we do want to specify a text height of an eighth of an inch so it starts to type 0 0.125 when we've done that simply click apply and then close and we can just zoom in a little to the text and just click it once to take it into transform mode just to move that out of the way into a uh, white space so that we can see the next part what we're going to do because what we want to do is just want to increase the spacing in between these letters here so come over to the edit text spacing and curve option and then hold the shift key down and then just click in a couple of times in between each of these characters here. And when we've done that, simply hit escape on the keyboard to exit that mode and then press F to zoom to fit. The next thing we want to do is we want to align this serial text to the bottom right of our nameplate. I want to align it so that the text doesn't go any further than the end of our E here and then I want to align it to the bottom uh, so it's aligned with this point of the curve here. So to do that we can use the horizontal and vertical guides and we can use the snapping options to snap the guides to the actual vectors. So to do that go to one of the guides, so I'm going to start with the vertical guides and simply drag one out and then with the mouse pointer simply bring it up to the point where you want to snap it to and then you'll see the cursor will change. So there we go, it's going to snap to the end of the E. So I can just zoom in just to show you that and then hit F just to zoom back out and then I'm going to next select the horizontal guide and I'm just going to snap that to this point here on the internal arc that we selected here and just to zoom in to show you that one as well. The next thing we want to do is we want to align this text. So we want to snap the bottom of this one here to the intersection of our horizontal and vertical guides. So to do that, simply select it once, the text, and then select it again to send it into transform mode. You'll see that I should then be able to snap to different points of the, the letters and numbers. So I'm just going to snap to the bottom of the one so and then I can drag it over and then it should then snap and you'll see there the, the crosshair to indicate that, that the moment is uh, going to snap to the vertical guide and then you'll see that the horizontal guide will then join it in the centre of the crosshair to let me know that it's going to snap to exactly the intersection of those two guides like so as you can see so hit F on the keyboard to zoom back out 
and then we can just simply swipe these away from our screen. So that now completes the design stage for our vectors so we can go ahead and save our work so we'll go to file and then save and just give a sensible name for our work so I'm just going to call mine vector phone and underscore vectors and then we can just save that we can then go ahead and then move on to the companion toolpathing tutorial don't worry if you didn't follow along for this one or you don't have what we have on screen at the moment you can simply either go through the video again or spend a little time perfecting your vectors or you can simply use our pre-prepared file which you'll find in the projects folder and that concludes this tutorial